Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the two most concerning charts in the cryptocurrency market. You've probably heard of them a few times. They've been circling around cryptocurrency YouTube and cryptocurrency Twitter for a couple of months now. One of which is the weekly chart Death Cross that is incoming, that has never happened in the entire history of Bitcoin and as seen by the name Death it's not very good. And the other of which is the monthly chart, which has lost an RSI level, which historically, historically marked the bottom in the last two cycles. That level has now been lost. We're going to show you these two charts. We're going to go over the bearish arguments around them, but we're also going to tell you why the bearish arguments are not as strong as some people think and why the charts aren't actually as scary, again, as some people think. Let's get into all of that in a second. But before we get into that, I need to give a quick shout out to Wolves of Crypto VIP. If you want to join the VIP group, you can do so in the pinned comment below. We post trading signals. The results for that will be coming out on the 13th. Uh, we've also got the community discussion group and we've also got the Crypto Academy courses where you can learn how to trade. On top of all of this, the BitGet Exchange is hosting a week-long trading event. I'm going to bring up the details now. So here are the details for that event. Uh, 15 USD bonus if you're trading volumes over 50,000, 60 USD if it's over 500,000, and 150 USD if it's over 1 million. Keep in mind, leverage amplifies trading volumes. If you have a $1,000 position and you're on 100x leverage, that counts as 100,000 in trading volume and actually 200,000 once you sell. So uh, these rewards are quite easily attainable uh, and go ahead and, and shoot away and fire away with those rewards. You can sign up to BitGet using my link in the pinned comment below. Okay, the first most concerning chart. Let's start out with the monthly chart. What is concerning about the monthly chart right now? I'll tell you exactly what's concerning about it and why a lot of people are getting very worried. The RSI. The RSI on the monthly chart is quite concerning. If you look at the RSI, what you can see historically, now I've zoomed all the way up so my camera's not in the way here. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the price as well. What you can see is that generally speaking in the last two occasions of the last two bear markets, the RSI on the monthly chart has never actually gone below 44. What this means is that on those two occasions, we bottomed out on the monthly chart, I'm marking the areas we bottomed out, at 44 exactly on the RSI. That is too precise out of a number that goes from 0 to 100. The exact number of 44 on two separate occasions at the same point in the cycle bottoming out there is too precise to be a coincidence, okay? And so a lot of people were expecting Bitcoin to bottom out at 44 on the RSI again because after all, it did it in the last two cycles. However... Bitcoin has actually come downwards and it's gone below 44. As you can see here, Bitcoin is currently lurking in that 40 region and it's seen three or four monthly candle closes below 44 on the RSI. In fact, not only did we go below it, but we also came down and rejected from the downside doing a resistance support flip and trended downwards further. So this is no doubt not a good thing for Bitcoin. And a lot of people have seen this as the end to a macro kind of overall bullish structure for Bitcoin and then the recession taking over, etc. And perhaps this is a new phase for Bitcoin. And that's the words that have been going around. Now, why is this wrong? Why is this not a very bad thing? Why is this not the end of the world? I'm going to tell you exactly why now. Well, there's three reasons, okay? The first reason is this. Yes, Bitcoin did go below 44 on the RSI. Yes, Bitcoin did bo is, is in the process of bottoming out lower on the RSI than previously expected. But what you'll notice is that in the 2014, right, 2014, 2013 cycle and the 2017 cycle, Bitcoin actually topped out in the same region at 96 on the RSI. Bitcoin didn't reach 96 on the RSI in this cycle. It reached around 8, 92, 91. Therefore, Bitcoin bottoming out lower on the RSI is pretty normal because it topped out lower on the RSI, right? It's not like it followed the cycle perfectly, okay? We should have already known, and we did already know on the Wolves of Crypto channel, that the fact that we didn't reach the same region before the bottom at 44 on the RSI meant that we probably weren't going to bottom at 44 on the RSI because we didn't reach the prerequisite forward for it. Now, you could still argue with that information that Bitcoin is entering a, a macro, you know, bear market, macro downtrend, whatever. And by macro, I mean like decade long. And that's fine. But I will bring up another couple of arguments, right? And one of which is stemming from the 21 EMA, okay? What you'll notice is that the 21 EMA on the, RSI, on, on the price action on the monthly chart is very, very important, right? In 2014, we held for support. Once we got below it, it acted as resistance on three separate occasions before we saw the final drop. In 2018, it was the one thing supporting us for about the entire six-month period of consolidation before finally losing it and finding rejection uh, briefly before moving up above it. You know, this is a very strong support zone. Same thing here in 2021, 2022, okay? Support. When we lost it, we dumped, we crashed, okay? So we spoke about this a lot at the start of the year. What I want to note 
is that when we lose this line, we crash. How far do we crash? Okay, let's go ahead and see. In 2014, when we lost that line, we crashed around 60... Oh, wait, let me remeasure that one more time, sorry. When we lost that line, we crashed around 60%. In 2017, when we lost that line... Uh, let's go ahead and measure it from the actual breakdown. When we lost that line, we crashed around 45%. Guess what? Right now, when we've lost that line, we have crashed around 55%. So we crashed around 60% in 2015. We crashed around 45% in 2018. We've down around 55% in 2022. Those data, right? That data there, those percentage drops, they're not too far apart. We're still on track here. We're still doing what we did in the last cycle as per the 21 EMA. Yes, the structure is different and that's why the RSI was different. But overall, we haven't dropped a massive amount more than we have in previous cycles. In fact, now, obviously, if we're measuring from the top to bottom, we've actually dropped significantly less. We've still got space to move downwards if we have to. And one more reason why that RSI support being lost is not particularly concerning, in my opinion, is the Gaussian channel. What we can see that is that right now, and what we've done previously, we have never dropped below the center line of the Gaussian channel. We tested in 2020, we didn't drop below it. We tested here in 2015, we didn't drop below it. We're testing the center line right now, we haven't dropped below it yet on the monthly chart RSI, we haven't, uh, sorry, on the monthly chart price action. If we do drop below it, that's where it gets a little bit worrying. But at this point in time, we're still on track here. We're still doing what we've done in previous cycles. It is worth noting though, that the Gaussian channel is basically a moving average. And so it will be lost eventually. But the point is, it hasn't been lost yet, right? So overall, you know, you could say, oh yeah, it's a big deal. We lost this line. And I guess it is a little bit of a big deal. But the fact that we didn't reach the top that we were meant to reach in 2021 in March in the first place means that, you know, you should have expected it to be lost. This shouldn't be news to people. This shouldn't be the breaking evidence that is going to confirm a massive, massive bear market, right? In March, 2021, you know, I suppose there was a lot of, um, warning signs for the current recession we're seeing right now, but it wasn't confirmed by any means. Uh, and, and so, you know, it, it's it's ridiculous to assume that the only reason we're in this position now is because we're entering this macro, macro bear market. This started a long time ago. This, this trend was invalidated over 18 months ago here. So yeah, it's not particularly concerning. In fact, 21 months ago it was invalidated. So yeah, it's not like a particularly unique thing that we've lost. It's just another one of the trend lines that we, we lose every bear market, another one of the uptrending lines in the logarithmic chart, another one of the SMAs. It's just like that in my opinion. And it was never going to hold completely uh, in the first place. But without further ado, let's get into the second chart, and that is the weekly chart DEF cross. I want to briefly interrupt this video to talk about the BitGet exchange. The BitGet exchange has five times lower fees than Binance, which is the biggest major exchange in the cryptocurrency market on futures. It also has zero feeds on every single spot pair, so you can trade spot for entirely free, no fees included. It runs events. Right now, it's got a FIFA World Cup event sponsored by Messi, the football player. It's got copy trading, strategy trading. It's got exclusive rewards and discounts in the reward center. It's got everything you need for a trader using exchange. This is the exchange I personally use as a trader for my everyday trading, and I highly recommend it everyone does so at the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel. Sign up using my referral link for exclusive rewards and discounts. That really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. For my fans from the United States of America, you can sign up using this exchange uh, with a VPN uh, and use the exchange with a VPN and just sign up using my referral link like normal and you'll be treated like a normal customer because this is also a non-KYC exchange. So make sure to sign up using my referral link in the pinned comment or the description below and without further ado, let's get back into the video. So what is a DEF cross? A DEF cross is when the 50 SMA and the 200 movie and the 200 SMA cross, right? It's when the 50 goes below the 200. In this case, the 50 SMA is the red line and the 200 is the green line. A DEF cross generally leads to a uh, pretty negative price action. We can check that out on the three-day chart right now. So here are some examples of what generally happens when we see a DEF cross. You can see when that red line crosses below the green line historically on the three-day chart, just an example chart, uh, we see big negative price action, right? We saw a cross here, we saw a huge dump, right? We saw in 2018, the same thing. We saw a cross here and it actually marked basically the day of the drop, right? We saw a massive drop due to that DEF cross on the three-day chart. And of course, in 2021 as well, we saw a cross on the three-day chart and we saw a massive dump as well. Now, this is the three-day chart. And as you know, the higher the time frame, uh, the more weight indicators have. Imagine what would happen on the weekly chart if we saw a death cross. That is the mindset that a lot of people are having. Uh, and so we see that, you know, we got very close to seeing a death cross here in 2015. We did avoid it. Uh, we didn't get too close in 2018. We managed to avoid it there. But right now, it looks as though we probably will be seeing a death cross as early as mid-January, okay? If we continue on this trajectory as early 
this mid-January, maybe push it back into February or maybe even March, depending on where the price goes. But at this point, it's looking relatively unavoidable. Okay, it looks, it's looking relatively, unless we see a massive, massive, massive surge in price action, this death cross will be coming in. So people are scared, right? They're thinking, okay, first time in history on the weekly chart, we see a death cross, all this negative stuff's going on. We just lost the RSI support in the monthly chart, as we talked about. They're, they're going through all these emotions and they're thinking, okay, Bitcoin's dead, Bitcoin's doomed, Bitcoin's got a 10K. That's kind of like the mindset everyone's getting in. Uh, completely disagree. Utterly disagree, uh, in, basically entirely. I don't think death crosses are worth my time. And I'll tell you why. Death crosses are natural reflections of price action. Yes, they generally do lead to downside price action. However, you can see that there are other indicators that, you know, on the surface, let me put it this way, on the surface, the death cross led to this drop. But what actually led to this drop? Let's go ahead and take a look. Well, was it the death cross or was it the fact that we had a descending triangle that was forming for a very long period of time? We were bouncing off of support for literally six to nine months. What was it? From February all the way through to November. For literally nine months, we were bouncing on support and it couldn't hold anymore. Was it the death cross that led to the drop or was it the triangle, right? They work together. These charts work in synchronization. Same thing in 2021. Look at what happened. Yes, the death cross was seemingly the trigger, but at the end of the day, we were in a bear flow flag formation, right? The death cross only forms, again, charts work together. The death cross only forms when the price action allows it to form. It is a natural reflection of the price action. The death cross itself doesn't lead to the drop. The price action and the uh, market patterns lead to the drop. The death cross is merely a reflection of the price action and the market patterns. And so even with me saying that, you could say, okay, well, if it's a reflection of the price action and the market patterns, that would still mean if we see the death cross, we would lead to a drop. And you were correct in saying that. However, I will point out the fact that they are one of the least reliable indicators you will ever find. The three-day chart is the best example of death crosses playing out. However, it is one of the only examples. If you look at golden crosses, for example, which is the reverse of a death cross when the green crosses under the red, yes, they occur when the price tends to be going upwards, but they only do that because the price goes upwards when the price goes upwards, the 50 SMA is dragged upwards and the 200 SMA is still still lagging. And so, of course, when you're in an upwards trend, it is a natural result to see a golden cross. They're, they're merely trend catchers. They don't actually start trends. Look at this, for example, right? The price surged upwards. So did the 50 SMA. The 200 SMA, SMA was too slow and so it was going sideways. We saw a golden cross. If the TA was perfect, the golden cross should have led the uptrend to continue, but it didn't. We went sideways. Why did we go sideways? Because the golden cross didn't trigger any of this. The golden cross was merely a result of the price action that occurred previously. It's very important to note when you're looking at death crosses and golden crosses, don't take them too seriously. Moving average crosses are, are always going to be one of the least reliable forms of TA uh, in terms of direct TA. They're more trend related. They're more for catching trends. They're not really for, oh, there's a death cross. We're going to see a massive drop, right? The three-day chart is kind of an exception. It's actually quite interesting that we saw that happen. Maybe it's a coincidence. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, I, I don't trust death crosses. And I don't think many people should. I do use them, of course but they're not exactly completely reliable. So those are the two charts there, the monthly chart and the weekly chart, the monthly chart with the RSI support and the weekly chart with the death cross. I, I, I think I've given some good arguments as to why they're not as scary as some people think they are. You know, I've seen people on YouTube, I'm not going to name names, say uh, the, the death cross, for example, is the main reason we're going to 10K. And I just, I completely and utterly disagree. As someone who teaches a TA course, I can tell you right now, we might go down. Uh, you know, that, that low, I guess it's possible, but it definitely won't be due to the death cross. I can tell you that much, right? The death cross will just happen as a result of the price moving down as it always does. So thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.